People need to tune into series three because there was such an intense cliffhanger at the end of season two. Series three, particularly, we got a big insight into the mind of Spectre. Daddy, look what I found! You're sucked into a world that you usually don't get a glimpse of. Darker and deeper than any other drama series has taken. <gasps> what ends up on the page is so much more interesting and unlikely and unsettling and out of left field than pretty much anything I could have ever come up with. How's he doing? He's lost so much blood. It looks like he's dying. The premise of The Fall is that you get to see a serial killer at work, played by Jamie Dornan, playing Paul Spector, and we see him attacking women and we see the investigative team. I play Detective Superintendent Gibson, who's brought in from the Metropolitan Police from London to Belfast on the hunt for this man, Paul Spector. I think the thing about Spector that has been more harrowing for people is that he is a relatively normal person outside of the murders. Could he really look like that? He isn't vilified from the offset as someone who is abhorrent. He induces fear in us, and ultimately his crimes do provoke repulsion. But what's gnawing away, and I think creating a greater sense of disturbance in, in the storytelling, is this sense that we have identified him as a human being. The Gibson Spectre relationship is strange. They have an equal obsession for each other. It's very much a cat and mouse dynamic. He's in hospital. He's incapacitated. And yet he's still infecting the lives of every person he comes into contact with. They've both caught each other out, surprised each other with their tactics. And I think that that psychological interaction is titillating for them. There are also aspects to their personality which bring them together. The character of Gibson, as played by Gillian, is not a squeaky clean, perfect whiter than white police officer. She's a woman with her own problems and her own difficulties. She's very different from anything that I've read or seen before. I still find her elusive and mysterious, and that's not very often the case. Study, Seeing Jamie Dornan and Gillian Anderson in action on set has been inspiring, and that's not to use a cliche. They're just electric when they're on screen together. Have the courage of your convictions, but admit that you remember it all. It took four or five years to really be able to create that dynamic between them. People always just come up to me after the first series and go, what's Gillian Anderson like to work with? And I was always like, we clearly haven't watched The Fall then because I didn't work with her in the first series. You know, I had that one moment. Um, but now I can say that I've worked with her uh, substantially. And she's brilliant. He's very, very good. It didn't have to be that way. It could have been that he was just good at appearing like a terrifying, menacing, attractive serial killer, but he actually can act his way out of a, a lot. <laughs> By the time they were in the third season together, they had a very, very strong sense of precisely what the other performer had done with the role to the point where it was beautiful to watch. Actually, seeing the final scene between them, the. The, the big showdown, really. You're aware that there's something going on there which is just way beyond dialogue. The interview is being suspended at 15.47, so the Paul Spector can consult with the solicitor. That's the detention officer. Hello, sir. To do something of this scale and with this intensity, it requires the integrity of a single creator. <laughs> Alan is just an extraordinarily talented writer and he's so spare in his writing and that's, that's really uncommon. 
Across season one, he worked as a writer and producer, and Al always had the intention of taking over the helm and basically directing as well as co-producing, and that's what he did on season two and on season three. I think that gave Al almost a unique capacity to hold this world in his head, in terms of its direction, its casting, its music, its editing, in terms of Gillian and Jamie and so on. There was one person who had the answer to the questions that would come up. There was someone who could define for this world what was right and what was wrong. Very good. That'll do us. Cut it. It was mentioned a lot in the first series that Belfast is sort of its own character within the fault. I'm very glad it was, because it means I don't have to do an accent, which is nice. The old bad times in Belfast are still lurking and they're touched on now and then. It gives it a, a, a dread and a threat, I think, Belfast. Certainly in the collective unconscious that I think uh, is important. Al has done a very good job of incorporating it into the story. It adds, I suppose, maybe from history a certain level of darkness, but then also a new energy to it. And it's nice to see Belfast in a different light in a different setting albeit <laughs> the hunting ground of a serial killer, but still, <laughs> it's nice to see something different being told. I'm from Belfast as well, so this is like literally sort of coming home. I haven't lived there for 15 years, but I am, um, they're like family, this crew, for the most part, with the same crew over all three series. It's so heavy, the subject matter, but we have a real laugh in this job. Five years wrapped on the fall. Thank you. <laughs> The leaving gift for Jamie was just a fantastic moment of kind of reward and completion for all of us. Working with Jamie was a joy. I can't even bear it is. Thank you so much. That's, um, that's unbelievable. The gift of the guitar and the symbolism, it was just an opportunity for the crew and the rest of the cast to express their affection and their enjoyment of working with Jamie. And I was moved by the fact that he was hugely moved by it. I think audiences have really connected with it because it's different. It's full of suspense and uncomfortable moments which make for good viewing. This job for me is professionally the best thing that's ever happened to me. The overriding memory that I will carry from it is it's such good material. It doesn't come along that often. We'd love to revisit a story with Gillian. We'd love to revisit a story with Gibson. But it's down to Al. We have to find the right story. Not every crime story will work for the fall. It has to be a very, very specific story. It's the nature of the show, and it's the thing that makes the show rare, is you have to wait for that story to come along. We have to wait for Al to find that next story. And when it comes, I'm sure we'll make it.